We have been going through the story of David this fall, and we've gotten to the really sticky and messy part. And I had a question this week, too, of the different translation of scripture that we're using, so wanted to share on that as well. This is the Common English Bible. It is the Bible that we give to our third graders, as well as to our confirmands. And so part of the reason that we are using this Bible is because we want our third graders to bring their Bibles in and be able to follow along exactly um, in worship and not get confused. And the reason that we give them this translation is that who remembers and still uses the good news translation of the Bible because it's easier to understand, right? Um, So it's actually not a translation. It's more of a paraphrase, but the gift that it gave us was putting what is not necessarily clear English and making it clear, and that's what the Common English Bible does. It just comes from a translation. Um, So it's more accurate to the Greek and Hebrew, but also has English that is more accessible for all of us. And so that's why we're using this translation. It also means um, that's why we're going to hear things much more directly than we're used to hearing from Scripture. And that's the church bit of the reason why we do this, to include our children and our youth and um, to include anyone else of us too that have struggled with the way of the Bible's English and understanding it. But there's also a theological reason, and that hits home today, because it's hard to be honest and name things that are ugly. It's hard to fully claim sin and the harm that it causes. It's much easier to use a euphemism that kind of takes off the harsh edges and smooths it out a bit and helps us settle a little bit more and not be quite so flustered and embarrassed and guilty. Except sometimes we need to be flustered and embarrassed and feel some guilt because we have done harm. And so part of the directness of this translation is also a call to be direct in our faith with God, to be direct with where we've messed up, where we've distanced ourselves from God, where we've caused harm for the world, where we've put a stumbling block, where, we've, where the harm that we have done has caused others to waver in their faith and their understanding and has harmed them. And so we come to this part of the David story, where last week we talked about the gifts that David had been given by Jonathan and Michal and Abigail because they believed in him, the sacrifices they made for his kingship to happen. And then we talked about how David did what the prophet Samuel warned and that he took what wasn't his. And how, unlike John in the cookie jar, he didn't let go. He tried to keep both and. And today is the day that we listen to the prophet Nathan confronting David. It's kind of an odd place to be in while celebrate All Saints Sunday, but it's also a perfect place to be in when celebrating All Saints Sunday. Because this Sunday is the day we celebrate and remember the faith of our foremothers and our forefathers. And all of faith is made in these crucible moments. It's made when we decide to be the Nathans, when we take the risk and follow God's call. Yes, God called Nathan and sent him to confront David, But Nathan didn't have to go and do it. After all, David had just sent Uriah to be killed. There's strong reason for Nathan to be terrified and to avoid this confrontation and to not speak this truth. And there are plenty of examples in scripture of court prophets who do just that and tell the king and those in power exactly what they want to hear because of fear of the repercussions. But not in this moment. In this moment, we celebrate the courage of this saint to speak truth to power, 
in the midst of great risk. And he did it brilliantly. He did it with a story. And if you're a Tolkien or a C.S. Lewis fan, I'm going to nerd myself out and, and have a confessional moment here. Part of the reason these theologians talked about the power of story is because it gives us the distance that we need to see what we can't otherwise. Because it gives us the chance to get invested in something that, if it were our own lives, would be too close to see, with too many defenses raised or too many things like fear or shame blocking us or anger. This story gives us the distance that we need, and it is that distance that Nathan offered David that helped David be able to see, right? He responded with compassion that was completely gone and lacking when he took Bathsheba. But yet in this story, in this moment, with this distance, he was able to see and he was able to hear. And then Nathan does the brave thing. He flips it. This is one of the most famous lines in scripture. Bill, were you required to memorize it in the test, right? Tests in seminary where you had to memorize um, and match up certain verses with who said them and what book of the Bible they came from. This was on them. So this is a big one. You are that man. And here's the other part of our All Saints Sunday, of the crucible moments of faith. David listened. David heard. Not only is there a miracle that Nathan spoke, there's a miracle that David listened. Nathan did not avoid the hard conversation, a conversation that came with great risk, a conversation that all of us would have understood just not wanting to have and figuring out a way to move through life around that conversation and not through it. But then when confronted with something that no one wants to hear, David was able to look at himself differently and offer repentance, which means turning around, which means seeing the taking that happened, owning publicly that it was wrong, and asking for forgiveness. There are no other more important moments of faith than these two. If we can be followers of Christ that both speak and hear, then we will have the faith that moves mountains because that is how that faith is refined. This is the fire that burns out all dross, all impurities, and brings us through. If we can be people who speak and who listen, if we can be followers of Christ that do not fall back in a spirit of fear, if we can be followers of Christ that recognize Christ's love and how perfect love casts out fear, then we'll be able to speak and hear in a way that brings forth life. And that's what we celebrate today. We celebrate the miracles of speaking and of hearing that our foremothers and our forefathers have given us. And we celebrate the faith that that has built in them, the legacy that we've been able to see, the legacy that has prepared our own journey and our own way, the legacy, the mantle that we are called to pick up and to put on and to carry with us. If we can do nothing else, friends, may we be followers of Christ who speak and who hear. Amen.